Yeah, thank you so much, Matt. Uh, thank you for a quite detailed overview on what are the key features of e-buses and what needs to be taken while operating them. Uh, I will ask uh, participants or audience to post a question. I have a, here a first question uh, from Gaurav. Uh, in the rooftop charging uh, CCS2, uh, can you tell how charging systems are kept safe from weather conditions such as rain? Is that an issue? Yeah, or? thanks. Uh, thanks for that question. I think this is, of course, um, I mean, with, with a good uh, with a good design of the of the uh, of the packing, you have the battery pack. They are stored, in, of course, in uh, you you mount often you mount this the battery cells into a battery pack and, and or a modular pack, and these are really stored on. In our case, the roof. Uh, um, and then, of course, I think it's more to keep things tight and, and safe. Um, and the rooftop might be quite advanced, but we this has been one of the top things when we are maintaining uh, these buses. We have a specific maintenance uh, kind of facility in order to maintain the, the rooftop mounted batteries. Um, uh, and of course, you need to keep uh, keep the ceiling tight, really. So it's impossible possible really to do this. But maybe if it can be easier to to consider a kind of a low mounting of batteries. Uh, if you have a high floor bus, then you can mount this uh, kind of in in a better way. I think that might be another. Like, like we see in the bus, uh, the truckies, trucks we have, then we mount the batteries on the side of the chassis and the beams. Um, yeah. Hopefully yeah, that. Thanks. How difficult are the component replacement, for example, battery or other engines, in terms of availability of components and the associated cost? Uh, yeah, the point, what, what you mean with the replaceability um, we, we see that when running these buses you wear out the batteries so one of the things we have learned is that you can actually have a second life of batteries so what we do today that's a new type of operation we move used batteries maybe you lose capacity uh, so much that it, it makes no sense to have them on bus then the, you can use them for a second life uh, and and uh, in this case, together with kind of as a backup battery for in a housing facility, but you also have some kind of re uh, remanufacturing or refurbish bish of of the battery, depending also how you, um, yeah. So that's, I mean, it's we we it's a lot of things we we learn we learn as we go. Now, now it's in Europe, it is getting more and known technology. So we, there are more and more in full operation, but it has been a journey, I would say, to, to learn this. Generally, the efficiency of performance of traction motors are optimized based on European or American urban and high driving cycles, but mm -hmm. the traffic or driving cycle is completely different. Uh, do you think it's better to op customize motor based on our driving cycle for optimum performance? Uh, what is your thoughts on that? Again, back to the requirements, really. Maybe you, you should consider, uh, maybe not the op performance might be good enough, but maybe it's more for maintainability. It should be easy to maintain, maybe better uh, or an, uh, a technology that is for a European uh, or American context, maybe you need higher speed. But maybe in a Nepal situation, you might have systems that are more robust that will withstand and last for maybe you have over dimension in order to to make them more uh, you, more the uh, for robustness and maintainability. Also, maybe the the road surfaces are more rough. You you need to protect the technology to really withstand. Uh, I mean, I've been to Nepal, so I mean, there are a lot of challenges here. So it's, uh, uh, I think, very much boiled down to what type of requirements you have. 
uh, and uh, to do, do the right selection of motor. Uh, and also there are many different technology when it comes to motor design. Um, I mean, the different technology to select and, and some are more advanced when it then you require more power electronics in order to control and manage uh, or, or maybe have an, a simpler motor or more robust. So there are many options here. That's that's the uh, that's that's the good thing. I mean, as an engineer, it's a lot of opportunities. But but if you try to do this uh, and to operate the bus, then also a lot of challenges actually. If the question is referred to electric machine of, uh, for instance, induction type, so AC induction that have a flux controlled by the current you put in the machine. You can undoubtedly, simply by the control, modify the performance and efficiency area. For instance, increasing efficiency, penalizing partly extreme performance. So in some cases, uh, without changing the hardware, that obviously is a cost, it's a PDA roadblock, there are opportunities to make the electric system better performing according to the specific needs of the place where you use it. 